Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are breaking below these important short-term support levels, which I'll talk more about in just a moment, so definitely stick around. First of all, just giving you a quick update on the US stock market. This right here is the NASDAQ 100 index on the daily time frame. And over the last one trading day, after seeing the US stock market open the trading day above the previous daily candle close, we then proceeded to see a small sell-off in the stock market later during the trading day. And once again, because the crypto market and the stock market are very correlated, the later sell-off during the trading day in the stock market also resulted in a sell-off in the crypto market. But if you're looking at the NASDAQ 100 index, which are of course the tech stocks, as of right now, it's still trading slightly above the June low. So it hasn't actually put in a new lower low as of right now. And at the time of recording this video, it's still currently finding some support along this range of support based on the June low, which is coming into play in between around 11,000 and 11.2K for the NASDAQ 100 index. But with that being said, if you're looking at the S&P 500 index, so not just the tech stocks, this index has actually just broken below below the June low. But as of right now, the break below is only a candle wick, at least at the time of recording this video. So the daily candle close actually closed slightly above the lowest point back in June. But even though that's the case right now, technically speaking, the S&P 500 index did actually put in a lower low. It briefly broke below the June low. And now even though the crypto market is usually more correlated with the tech stocks, so the NASDAQ 100 index, this lower low formation in the S&P 500 index is still not good for crypto because generally speaking, the S&P 500 index and the NASDAQ 100 index are very correlated as well. So usually if we're seeing one of the major indices break below the June low to form a lower low, that could actually be foreshadowing what is about to come potentially for the NASDAQ 100 index, which could also be foreshadowing for what potentially is about to happen to the crypto markets. And speaking of the crypto markets, getting into the Bitcoin part of this video, this right here is the daily Bitcoin chart. And as of right now, like the NASDAQ 100 index, the Bitcoin price is still holding onto this horizontal range of support and hasn't yet broken below its June low. And so at least for now, this is still the range of support that I'm paying attention to for Bitcoin on the daily timeframe, which by the way, is coming into play in between around 19,000 and around 18 and a half thousand. But if the price of Bitcoin starts confirming a break below this price range, so for example, if we see a daily candle close below around 18.4K, then that would be the type of signal basically telling us that we're at least going to retest the June low and potentially likely about to break the June low if we confirm a break below around 18 and a half thousand on the daily time frame. But anyway, at least as of right now, if you're looking at the daily Bitcoin price oscillators at the moment, they're showing very low momentum to either direction with this bullish divergence, which is technically still active on the chart, telling us that we're due to see reduced bearish momentum, which is pretty much what we've been seeing over the last one week ever since we formed the bullish divergence. And also, so if you're looking at the daily Bitcoin MACD, right now the histogram is sitting in the red, which technically means we're currently bearish. But at the moment, if you're looking at the histogram within the MACD, once again, we're seeing almost no bearish momentum, especially over the last one week. But it is important to understand that when I'm talking about no bearish momentum on the daily time frame, that's referring to these types of moves on the charts. Because as you can see, over the last one week, we certainly haven't seen any sort of moves like this. And instead, we've mostly been chopping around sideways. But as I've also been mentioning over the last one week, even though we have a lack in momentum at the moment in the price of Bitcoin in the somewhat shorter term, technically speaking, we are still within this bearish trend. We haven't actually confirmed a bullish reversal on the daily time frame because, for example, the price of Bitcoin is still forming lower highs and lower lows, which is pretty much exactly what a bearish trend is. So technically, the trend on the daily time frame is still bearish as of right now. We're basically just seeing a shorter term pause within the bearish trend at the moment. But anyway, zooming into the shorter term, taking a look at the four hour Bitcoin chart, as you can see here, obviously the price of Bitcoin got a strong rejection from the 50% retracement level, which was acting as resistance. And in case you missed my last video, that level of resistance is sitting at around 20.3K approximately. And at the same time as the price of Bitcoin running into resistance, we also saw the four hour Bitcoin RSI enter into overbought territories, which was signaling to us that we have limited room to the upside in the shorter term. 
time. And now, with that being said, even though I was expecting this bullish move in the short term to potentially start slowing down based on the RSI being overbought and the price running into resistance, to be completely honest, I wasn't actually expecting a reaction like this all the way back down to these lows. And so this is just an example as to why I put my stop loss into profits on a breakout trade like this. So in case the price target doesn't get met, and so if the price reverses sooner than expected, I will at least be stopped out in profits either way. And if you're new to this channel, I did actually explain that in my last video that I posted yesterday on the channel. But it is important to mention that that is just letting you know what I personally do with my own money and my own trades and is not financial advice for you because obviously you can do whatever you want with your own money. But anyway, back to the chart, we do actually have a short term horizontal level of support based on these previous lows, which is sitting at around 18.7k approximately. And anything below that level, then I'll be focusing on around 18.4k, which is the bottom of this price range right here on the daily time frame. And going back to the four hour chart, looking at the four hour Bitcoin RSI, obviously with the recent move to the downside in the Bitcoin price, that has helped to reset the RSI back down towards neutral levels. But we still technically have a little bit more room to the downside because as of right now, the four hour Bitcoin RSI isn't yet in oversold territories like back here, for example. And staying on the four hour time frame, but just giving you a quick update on that previous symmetrical triangle pattern, which initially broke out to the upside, but obviously fell slightly short of the technical price targets. And so instead of breaking out and seeing around a nine to 10% gain, instead we broke out and saw around a seven to 8% gain. But like I just said earlier, even though the price of Bitcoin fell slightly short of the technical price targets, anyone who entered the breakout trade at the point of the breakout, once we saw our first bullish confirmation, such as a four hour candle close above resistance, and then moved the stop loss into profits, still did well on this trade if the stop loss was in profits. And that's why I also explained yesterday, if for example, I missed the entry for a long position at the breakout, I certainly would not open a long position up here after the price has already pumped. Because like I said yesterday, the downside risk at these levels compared to the potential reward left to go is simply not ideal to enter into a long position right here. But of course, that's not financial advice. That's just letting you know what I would personally do. And considering the price of Bitcoin has just now confirmed a four hour candle close below this previous ascending line of support, which was sitting at around 18.9K. Technically speaking, this is one bearish confirmation on the four hour Bitcoin chart right now, which is basically telling us that we're leaving that bullish relief. And now we're potentially continuing on with the larger bearish trend that's still on the daily time frame, which hasn't actually changed at all. And just before getting into the Ethereum part of this video, if you want to stay up to date on all of these moves in the market, instead of waiting for a few more hours until these videos come out, because these videos are a full on process to make, then for fast real time updates, make sure to follow me over on my Twitter, because I post these sort of updates throughout the day over there. And you can find a link to my Twitter in the description down below and also in the pinned comment, but please beware of scammers trying to copy my Twitter. So only use the link that is actually down below in the description rather than searching for my Twitter because it could come up with a scammer. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the daily Ethereum chart. And right now, the price of ETH is still currently trading above this golden pocket level of support, which is sitting at around 1.2K on the logarithmic scale. And so as of right now on the daily time frame, that's still the important level of support that I'm paying attention to. But as for resistance, we have this point of resistance right here, which is sitting at around 1340. And especially over the last one week, this has been acting as strong resistance for the price of ETH if you're looking at the daily candle closes. And once again, as I've been mentioning over the last one week, if you're looking at the daily Ethereum MACD, this is currently showing reduced bearish momentum in the somewhat shorter term, which if you're looking at the last couple of times this has happened, this basically means we're due to see a bit of a short term relief. And obviously, this is what it's been playing out over the last one week or so as expected. But keep in mind, even though we're seeing these signals at the moment, like we saw back here, this doesn't mean that we're actually entering into a bullish reversal because the trend on the daily time frame is still obviously a bearish trend forming lower highs and lower lows. And so as I've been saying for pretty much the last one week, this signal on the daily time frame means that we're basically in a shorter term pause within the bearish trend, kind of like what we're in back here. And if you zooming into the four hour Ethereum chart right now, as of recording this video, we've currently seen one four hour candle close below this previous ascending line of supports, which as I said earlier for Bitcoin on the four hour time frame, this technically speaking is one bearish confirmation signal telling us that we're potentially leaving the short term relief and now 
are continuing with the larger bearish trend that is still intact. But anyway, going back to the four hour time frame and taking a look at this chart right here, our Fibonacci levels of resistance, obviously we ran into some resistance close to this 38.2% Fibonacci level of resistance, which is sitting at around 1.4K. And right now the price of ETH at the time of recording this video is currently running into a bit of short-term horizontal support based on these previous lows, which is sitting at around 1270 to 1280. But anything below this level, if you start to see four hour candle closes below around 1270, then I would expect a drop down towards this local low, which is sitting at around 1210. So nearly 1.2K, which is where that golden pocket level of support is sitting at on the daily logarithmic chart. But going back to the four hour time frame, right now the price oscillators are actually looking somewhat neutral with the RSI still chopping around the neutral level. And the four hour Ethereum MACD as of right now is still chopping around quite a lot between bullish and bearish with very small waves in momentum. And so based on these four hour Ethereum price oscillators, as of right now, these are basically telling us that we're potentially still due to see a little bit more choppy sideways price action in the shorter term, despite the price of ETH having one bearish confirmation signal so far. And so based on all of this, the situation in the immediate short term at the moment is looking slightly more neutral to bearish, while the larger trend on the daily time frame is still obviously bearish. That has not changed at all. But believe it or not, whether the crypto market is pumping, dumping, or just chopping around sideways like it is at the moment in the short term, you can still make money in crypto if you watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. Because the video in the top left of your screen shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is going either up or down, and the video in the bottom left of your screen shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.